I'm Thibault and I work for Paris Technologies and today uh, I'll talk about Paris Designer. Um, I'll be super quick at the beginning of the presentation because these are things you probably know and I'll be much slower at the end. Um, so let's go to the basics, talk about the basics. How do we go from a message uh, to an executed transaction on the blockchain? So you have a message, you create a transaction, you sign it with your private key and then you send it somehow to the blockchain. This private key is the, the key point, right? If you lose it or if someone gets access to it, uh, that's game over. So whether people store their private key, most of the time, or sometimes, at least back in the days, it was securely encrypted on a JSON, for instance, where you have a, um, a password. You could use it on uh, micro wallets, for instance, but the thing is you have to give kind of your private key because you upload uh, this, this uh, JSON and then you give, sorry, give your password. So the problem is if my uh, if the wallet get hacked because it's a website, it's actually uh, kind of a, a large uh, um, uh, security threat. Uh, well, then game over. What you could do is, and uh, that's much better because MetaMask is not exactly um, a software uh, uh, on your computer and it's not exactly a website. You could use MetaMask, and in the end, that's kind of the same, right? You're going to give your private key to MetaMask, and if MetaMask for some reason gets hacked, your PC gets hacked. Uh, because the extension can be, um, you know, they are just updated automatically or we were talking about if the dependency of MetaMask is, is um, hacked, then basically you are game over again. So what you could do again is use, for instance, my crypto or Parity Feather, which is an, um, a desktop application. But in the end, you can still give your private key to those, um, <coughs> those things and the, those uh, softwares. And even if this is on desktop and it's maybe a bit harder to get hacked on your desktop, if the whole, let's say, Windows or Linux or Mac gets um, hacked, then your game over again. So what people do to have like kind of the highest security today, or one of the highest security while being able to use the private key, because highest security is just, you know, take your mnemonic and put it uh, somewhere super, super safe, it's just you cannot use it anymore, right? So it doesn't make sense. So people use, for instance, a treasure, and they use it together with a, an online application. So in the middle, there's Feather, um, and you create uh, a transaction online with this online software, you send it to the um, hardware wallet, you sign it from the hardware wallet, and then you send it to the blockchain that verifies the signature. Um, so if this guy gets uh, hacked, it will eventually send a hacked transaction, but here you can check it, right, on the treasure and or uh, on, on the hardware wallet, and that's where things just stop. Uh, what could eventually uh, happen is that the transaction that is sent is perfectly okay, you're gonna just, you know, um, sign it, and then they somehow try to trick or change the message. As you probably know, this doesn't work, right, because you cannot uh, change the message that has been signed without um, the blockchain to reject it. So the whole key is this uh, piece of hardware. We'll have the key, we'll sign, and this is the well, the, the, the key part, right? You, you want to get this guy super um, super safe. So we thought, wouldn't it be cool if there was an app that could turn an old smartphone into a hardware wallet? Because everybody or many people have a, an old smartphone, right? That is laying around, they're not using it, and while um, the whole point is you want to have, you know, um, um, a hardware wallet, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a phone that is offline and, and you want to have a, a way to sign your, piece, uh, sign your transaction offline, we could use a, a phone and sign QR codes to that. So that's why we created Parity Designer. Um, so this is how it looks like and what does it do? You can create accounts, you can recover accounts, you can sign transactions, you can sign messages offline. So this is supposed to be offline all the time. So it's maybe not the latest Samsung, it's going to be your old uh, phone, right? But it's the same. Um, you should not use your smartphone that you use every day. You should factory reset it. You should encrypt it. You should turn on airplane mode and never turn it on again. And uh, never plug it into a computer. So how does it work? I have a, a little demo. On the right, I have Feather. On the left, I have Paris Signer with an offline phone. So what I do is I create an account, for instance, on Ethereum. And so yeah, I can, I can choose from yeah, different accounts, I can choose from different uh, identicons, that's pretty fun. Um, let's have a look, um, well, here there's one that looks like a little fox, so that's pretty cool, I'm going to pick this one, and I'm going to give it the name, etc. On the right, again, this is on, um, on the right, there's a synced um, 
wallet that is offline and ready to send some transactions. So on the left, I gave, uh, you know, I created an account, so I have uh, um, a mnemonic. I put a pin, of course, because you want to, you know, secure it somehow if someone gets hold of your, of your phone uh, that is offline. And on the right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this account that has been created offline. So I can just scan a QR code. The left, I'm going to show this QR code to my PC, basically, to the um, webcam of the PC. Just give the name, right? No need to sign to to put any um, any password or whatever because anyway, it's it's on the phone that is offline. Um, now I've sent already some uh, some money to this account, and I'm just going to show you how we're going to send money from the account. So now from this account that is offline, I will send money to another account. So I'm going to show you how to sign a transaction. So from the account that is offline, I'm just going to Say scan, and this on the right is the uh, transaction that needs to be signed, right? It hasn't been signed. So on the left, on the offline, I'm going to scan this transaction from my PC. Then I'm going to review it on a nice screen that is a smartphone screen, right? So it's pretty nice. I can see everything. I can just sign it by typing uh, my, um, my PIN. And then I'm going to show the signed transaction. So on the left, it's the signed transaction that I'm just going to, going super quick, but just going to scan with my, with my webcam. And that's it. Right. So uh, behind the scene, it's within in React Native. We have uh, cryptographic libraries written in Rust. Everything is made to work offline, so you will not uh, never get online with your phone. The private key never is exposed to the, to the internet. Um, just to be super clear, if you have millions of uh, uh, euros or ETH, uh, just don't use this. Um, <laughs> what's next? Uh, we want to use biometric encryption, dynamic network. We can talk about it. Uh, you can get it on the App Store, on the Android, or uh, we have uh, an IPK on GitHub. Thank you very much.